We'll be learning about regression line using TID4. This question can be found on worksheet 1.2. So a fireworks projectile is launched from a cliff and there's a table of values forth. If you plot those points in, that's the projectile right there of a fireworks. And apparently it's coming down, right? And it looks like it's going to hit about 6, but we're not sure. Right? I'm not quite sure about this one. Okay? But I but definitely looks like a parabola. The question is asking after we scatter plot, use the quadratic reg feature on a calculator to find the function that fits its data. And the question is, how do you do them, right? So take out your T I D four and let's take a look. Uh, once you signed on, what you can do is you need to enter the data, right? Uh, the data, the way you do that is hit the stat button. Oh, by the way, you can look at the bottom uh, over here to key history, key press history, right? And we need to edit. So you could either click one or press, when you're already one highlighted, press enter. So if I already came in and entered the values for you, and what happened was all the times right here, uh, 0 through 5, I, that's x value, so I put them in list 1. And L2 is the height, and the only thing that I did not enter is the last one. I believe that's uh, 35. Yes, it is. So what you do is, is, see this highlighted portion right there? Arrow key down, keep going down. There you go. And you type in 35. So now I've entered all the values, right? Um, now we want to see them on your calculator, but usually your calculator does not show the plotting of individual values. So you have to turn it on. What you do is, do you see this button right there? Stat plot. Right. Second, stat plot. And it will get you to plot one, two, three, so on and so forth. I already turned it on, uh, but chances are yours is off. So why don't you do, if it's off, come here and click enter. And then make sure that you're probably flashing over there. Make sure you scroll over, press enter to make sure you choose that. Also, make sure that you have a scatter plot right there, the type. And X list should be L1. That's a dependent variable. And the Y list, you will get all that information from list 2. Okay. And the first mark is good enough. If you have a choice of color, choose the color you like. Now, when you're graphing it, um, you need to have the right window. Otherwise, you can't see the graph. So make sure, hit the window. I already did it for you guys because the time goes from 0 through 5, and the height goes from up to six. Uh, sorry, up to 80, right? So basically what I did was the Y max I put as 100. I put y min as a negative 10 because well, I want to be able to see the y axis and put the scale, the y scale as 10. Uh, so it would put a tick mark every 10, right? Every multiple of 10. And I want my minimum x value to be negative 3 so I could see the uh, x equal to 0. And y max 10, y scale 1. Once you've done all that, you could hit graph. And when you do that, you get those scatter plot, just like this. It looks exactly the same. But we, we could do this by hand, right? But the function that we're looking for is, right here, guys, quad, quad reg, right? Control P. So we're looking for this right here, guys. So to use that, we need to go to stat right here, stat. I've already entered all the values. Do you see this right here? L1 and L2. Uh, L1 we chose as x, uh, which is the independent variable. L2 we call it a y list, which is the dependent variable. What you need to do is go to stat, and we need to calculate the values, right? And there are a lot of stuff here, so don't worry about those. Uh, we're only interested in this case quad reg. 
This is a regression line for quadratic equation. If this was a linear equation, we would just go with linear regression right here, either 4 or 8. But we're interested in number 5, so you could scroll down to 5 and press Enter, or simply press 5. I just want to make sure that X list is L1, we got L2, and come all the way down to Calculate and press Enter. And what we have here is y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus d. And the coefficients, sorry, are the values, coefficients negative 5, 20, and 60 are listed. So we have to type that in now, right? So we want to make sure that if the curve looks just like that. So you go to the y, and you just type it in. I already did that for you guys. Now, if you notice that the equal sign is just like any other, it means it's not going to show. Scroll over, press Enter, like this. You see how it's darkened right here? It means that when you press graph, the graph is going to show. And that graph will be in blue. Let's hit graph. And there you go. And that number is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 right here. It seems to cross at 6, doesn't it? Right. Uh, so how do you make sure that it crosses at 6? There's a button here called trace. The difference between the trace and the graph is that trace, you have the graph and you're able to find the actual values. If you notice when I hit trace, there's plot 1, L1, and L2. What that means is that they plotted the values they have taken from list 1 and list 2. So this button right here, it's highlighting right here, clicking back and forth, uh, is a 0 to 60. It's blinking, right? If you scroll to the right, and it will give you the exact value of each one, and you can see that at the bottom of the display, all the way. But the problem is, is I can't get to this point. That's part of it is because I could only go to plot 1. To change that to the graph, you down scroll. See this right here? And you could just switch back and forth like this. Now the equation is negative 5x squared plus 20x plus 60. Now if I scroll to the right, I have all these values, guys. Okay, so when I came here, I can't. This is not exactly 6, is it? It's near 6, but it appears to be crossing this point. So, so another advantage of trace is not only can you just trace back and forth along the curve, you could actually enter the value. You could actually enter the value. Let's try to press 6 here. Then x equal to 6, and the y equal to 0. Now we're sure that the projectile will hit the x-axis when x equal to 6. So coming back here, now that I'm sure of that, I write down the answer, and there you go. Moving on to question number 16. What is the maximum height of the projectile? Well, it's kind of obvious, you can see that right there. And what is the interval in projectile's height when it's increasing? Well, when it's increasing, it's coming up to 2, so it's from 0 to 2 height increases over the interval 0, 2. It's decreasing from 2 to t, right? Right here. But we're not sure what that is, right? But since we already figured that out, we know it's 6, OK? So t, right here, guys, is when it will be decreasing until it hits the ground, right? So I want to find the time at which projectile hits the ground. Because we already figured that out, uh, at 6 second mark, the projectile will hit the ground. The ground, in this case, is the x-axis. If you have any questions, please come see me during tutorial, and I'll, I'll help you use it. Have a good night.